All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about annuity immediate versus annuity due. And so, so far when we have been looking at annuities or calculating annuities, whether that be the future value or the present value, we have been calculating what is called an annuity immediate. And so you may recognize these two formulas right here. This is the future value of an annuity or a series of payments, specifically an annuity immediate. And this formula is the present value for an annuity immediate. And we identify annuity immediate with the idea of payments being made at the end of each payment period. And so in the case of a future value scenario, for example, the accumulation value that we are trying to find, that future value, is calculated at the time of the final deposit, right? It is calculated immediately after that last deposit is made, which is why in a series of payments, we call it an annuity immediate. As soon as that last payment is made, the future value is calculated. And so if you look at our timeline up here, if we are in the present at time equals zero, and we wanna know the future value of an annuity where we're making payments of amount X every period up until N, so we'd be paying X in year one and X in year two, and then we'd skip across to the year before N, so N minus one, and then the year N, so we'd be paying X there and there. This point in time right here, T equals N, is the valuation point for that future value. And so right here would be the valuation point of the future value of an annuity immediate. As soon as that last payment was made, we are calculating that future value. And then for the present value of an annuity immediate, we would understand the present value to be found at the beginning of the first period, or t equals zero. And that is because it is being found one period before the first payment is made. Right, so if we're looking at this timeline here, our payments are being made starting at time equals one and going up to some time t equals n. The present value is calculated here at t equals zero because it is one period before the first payment. So the payments are still being made at the end of each period, right? This would be period one right here between time equals zero and time equals one. Period two would be between time equals one and time equals two. And then the nth period would be between n minus one and n. In fact, I'll label that here real quick. This is the first period. This is the second period. And this is our nth period. And so here at time equals zero is the valuation point for the present value of an annuity immediate because it is one period before that first payment is made. And so here is where the present value of annuity immediate would be calculated. And so these two formulas here deal with annuity immediates, where the payments are being made at the end of each period. But there is another form of an annuity known as an annuity due, where instead of the payments being made at the end of a period, they're being made at the beginning. And so that means that for the present value of an annuity due, that's referring to the valuation of an annuity at the time of and including the first payment. So if we look at our timeline here, that would be right here. The moment that that first payment is made is the valuation point for the present value of the annuity due, right? The difference is that an annuity immediate is evaluated one period before that payment is made, but the annuity due is evaluated at the time that that first payment is made. And so this would be the valuation point. And the notation is pretty similar. It looks like this, you have A and then N, and the interest rate, but then we're going to add these two little dots above the A, and that is to identify that this represents the present value of an annuity due, not an annuity immediate. And so then for the future value of an annuity due, that's going to refer to the valuation of an annuity one payment period after the final payment is made. So before, with annuity immediate, we were finding the present value right after that last payment was made, but for the future value of annuity due, it's going to be evaluated one period after. And so right here is going to be that valuation point, t equals n plus one, right? If we're making a certain amount of payments for an n amount of periods, the valuation point is going to be at t equals n plus one one period after that last payment was made. And the notation for the future value of an annuity due is also very similar to its annuity immediate counterpart, and that is that we have S, and then the number of payment periods, and then the interest rate, and then you're gonna have these two little dots above the S, just like we did for the A in the present value scenario. Okay, so the main difference between an annuity immediate and an annuity due is when the payments are being made and therefore when the valuation point is 
for each of those annuities. So for annuity immediate, which is in red here, that's what we've been working with up until this point. Those are annuities where the payments are being made at the end of a period. What's new here is the annuity due, or what's in blue here, where the payments of that annuity are being made at the beginning of each period. And so because of that, you'll notice that the valuation point for the present value and the future value of an annuity due is one period later than for an annuity immediate. And so we can actually come up with a formula for the present value and the future value of an annuity due based off that knowledge that their valuation point is one period after their annuity immediate counterpart. And so for the future value of an annuity due, that will be equal to the future value of an annuity immediate, S, N, and then I, times one plus the interest rate to the first power. Right, when we have a value somewhere on our timeline and we wanna bring it forward one period, we compound it using that interest rate for one period, right? This would be to the power of one. And so that would accumulate this future value for one more year. And it would take it from this point on a timeline to this point on a timeline, right? We are bringing this value forward one year. And we can do the same thing for the present value of an annuity due. So the present value will be equal to the present value of an annuity immediate brought forward one year, right? So the value of the annuity immediate is right here. If we bring it forward one year, we now have the valuation point for the annuity due. And so then we typically don't write the first power, so I'm gonna erase that there. And so then if we wanna use that notation that I gave you earlier, our future value would be equal to this notation, and the present value would be equal to this notation. And so these would be the two formulas we would use for an annuity due, for a present value scenario or a future value scenario. However, we can actually change these formulas to look a little nicer and take on a form of their own so that we don't have to use a notation for the annuity immediate because that's a little bit confusing. And so what we'll do is we will simplify these two formulas to find some nicer formulas for these two notations. And so let's do that next. All right, so we have our two formulas here. We have our future value formula for an annuity due, and we have our present value formula for an annuity due. And so we'll start with the future value calculation. We're going to make this a lot nicer to use. And so we'll start by rewriting this notation to what it's actually equal to, the actual formula. And so if we do that, we'll have that this is equal to one plus i to the power of n minus one divided by i times one plus i. And so then if we multiply this quantity into the numerator here, this will be equal to one plus i to the power of n times one plus i. And you could combine these two to have a power of n plus one, but I'm not going to do that here because this quantity isn't going to be here very long. And you'll see why in our next step. And so then we'll subtract one times this quantity. So we're gonna have one plus i. And this is all still divided by i. And so our next step here is going to be to multiply by a form of one of the following. We're gonna have this. We're gonna have one divided by one plus i divided by one divided by one plus i. Right, so we have one divided by one plus i divided by one divided by one plus i, which is a form of one. This is divided by itself, so we're just multiplying this expression by one. And we're doing that to cancel out this one minus i in the numerator, which is going to leave us with a very interesting result in our denominator. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to one plus i to the power of n minus one, right? We just divided out this one plus i term that we just multiplied in, so now it's gone, and now we're just left with a denominator of i divided by one plus i. And so now does this denominator look familiar to you in any way? Well, if you've been following along with our lessons, you have come across this formula in the past, and that is that D, a discount rate, is equal to I divided by one plus I, right? This is the formula or the conversion rate from an interest rate to a discount rate. And so we can actually rewrite this to be equal to one plus I to the power of N minus one divided by D. And we also know that D is equal to one minus the present value factor, V. And so what I'm actually going to write this as is one minus V in the denominator. And so that's what I'm going to write for this formula. And so this is the formula that is going to be equal to the future value of an annuity due. And so the difference between this formula for the future value of an annuity due and the future value of an annuity immediate is just the denominator. For annuity immediate, it's I, but for annuity due it is one minus V. 
And you'll see that we're going to get a very similar result when we try to make this formula a lot nicer. In fact, it's basically the same process. And so if we rewrite what this notation is equal to, we can get started on finding our formula for the present value of an annuity due. And so this will be equal to one minus the present value factor to the power of n divided by i times one plus i. And so then if we distribute this one plus i to the numerator, we'll have that this is equal to one plus i minus v to the power of n times one plus i divided by i. And so then once again, we are going to multiply by this form of one to get rid of this one plus i quantity in the numerator and have a nice result in the denominator. And so we'll do that once again, we'll be multiplying by one divided by one plus i divided by one divided by one plus i. And if we do that, these one plus i's will be eliminated. And so this will be equal to one minus the present value factor to the power of n divided by i divided by one plus i. And so once again, this is the formula that we use to find d given an interest rate. And so we can rewrite this to be d, but then change it like we did over here to one minus v. And so in this case, the present value of an annuity due will be equal to one minus the present value factor to the power of n divided by one minus the present value factor to the power of one. And so this is going to be our formula for the present value of an annuity due. And so this is going to be a lot nicer to use than what we previously had. All right, and so now before we look at an example problem, I wanna show you one more formula that we can create. All right, so so far we have found the future value and present value formulas for an annuity due, but what would we do if we had a perpetuity due? Right, we have encountered annuities that have payments that never end. And we said that the present value of a perpetuity or an annuity with an infinite number of payments is equal to one divided by the interest rate. And so just like we multiplied our annuity immediate formulas for the future value and present value by that factor of one plus i, right, we multiplied by one plus i, we can do that for our perpetuity as well. And then this will become a perpetuity due rather than a perpetuity immediate, right? Because just like we have only been calculating annuity immediates up until this point, we had only been calculating perpetuity immediates up until this point as well. And so now if we multiply one plus i by this formula, we will then have a perpetuity due instead of a perpetuity immediate. And so this would be equal to one plus i divided by i. And if you notice, Remember we said that D or the discount rate is equal to I divided by one plus I. This is the reciprocal of this, right? We have one plus I divided by I rather than I divided by one plus I. And so this is going to be equal to one divided by D, right? Because if this is the reciprocal of D, well, this is also the reciprocal of D because it's one divided by D. And so then just like we used for these formulas up here, we know that the discount rate is equal to one minus the present value factor. And so then we finally have that this is equal to one divided by one minus V. And this is the present value of a perpetuity due where the payments never end. And so this is our third and final formula regarding annuity due instead of annuity immediate. All right, let's look at an example problem. So for example, we have payments of $60 are invested each year starting today for 10 years. With an effective annual interest rate of 5%, what is the present value of these payments? And then we also wanna know what is the future value after 10 years. All right, and so the important thing to remember when working with annuity dues is that the payments are made at the beginning of the payment period and not at the end, right? If they're made at the end, then that means that we're working with annuity immediate. And so in this case, we are told that these payments of $60 are invested each year starting today for 10 years, right? So if it says starting today, that means that we're working with annuity due. These payments are being made at the beginning of the period today. And so we know that our payment amount X is equal to 60. And we know that we're gonna have 10 of those payments for 10 years because we're paying $60 each year for 10 years. So we know that N is equal to 10. And then we're also told that our effective annual interest rate is 5%. And so I is equal to 5% which is equal to 0.05 in decimal form. And so remember that for any type of annuity calculation, whether it's annuity immediate or annuity due, you still need to have an interest rate that is compounded at the same frequency that your payments are being made for. And so in this case, we have that. Our payments are being made yearly, right? Each year, starting today for 10 years, and our interest rate is an effective annual interest rate. So the two frequencies match up and we are good to go. 
And so let's start by calculating the present value of these payments first. And so we know that the present value is equal to x times the formula for annuity due, which looks like this. And so now if we plug in what we know, this will be equal to 60 times this notation, where n is equal to 10, and our interest rate is 0 0.05. And so if we rewrite this, but use the formula that we found for this notation, this will be equal to 60 times 1 minus the present value factor to the power of 10, divided by one minus the present value factor. And so then if we rewrite the present value factor to what it is equal to, this will be equal to 60 times one minus one divided by 1.05 to the power of 10, divided by one minus one divided by 1.05. And so if we plug this into our calculator, remember that we have this quantity up here divided by this quantity, the present value will be equal to $486.47. That is the present value of those 10 payments of $60. And so then to find the future value, which is the next part of this question, what is the future value after 10 years? That's going to be equal to the amount of the payments x times this notation. We have s and two little dots, and then a number of payments and the interest rate, which in this case will be equal to 60 times that notation, 10 years or 10 payments and the interest rate of 0 0.05. And so if we rewrite this to be what that formula is equal to, we'll have that this is equal to 60 times one plus 0 0.05 to the power of 10 minus one divided by one minus the present value factor. And then if we rewrite this again, but write what that present value factor is equal to, this is equal to 60 times 1.05 to the power of 10 minus one divided by one minus one divided by 1.05. Right, and so in case maybe you haven't been following, I should have probably mentioned this earlier, but the present value factor is equal to one divided by one plus the interest rate, and that's to the power of n, where n is the power of the present value factor. This is important to know if you're going to evaluate these formulas. And so hopefully if you were confused by how I was getting these values from that present value factor, that this will clear that up a little bit. Okay, and so then if we plug this into our calculator, 60 times this quantity divided by this quantity, the future value will be equal to $792.41. And so that would be the future value of those 10 payments of $60. And so now you know how to calculate the present value and the future value for an annuity due or a series of payments that are being made at the beginning of a payment period rather than at the end. And so that's really the only difference between annuity immediate and annuity due. And so we have different formulas for each of those scenarios. All right, and so if you wanna see some more example problems of using these formulas, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.